Hello, welcome to the video. Today you will see uh, TSM's Valorant roster changes. Uh, if you do enjoy this kind of content, usually uh, since I'm a Valorant reporter, you'll see this kind of stuff first on my channel. Feel free to subscribe, uh, turn on your notifications, etc, etc. Do all that kind of stuff. And uh, without further ado, please enjoy the video. I wanted to give the lowdown on TSM's roster and I wanted to just basically give as much information as I could because I know there's been a lot of speculation about TSM and you know what they've been doing, what they've been up to. Let's just start with the beginning, shall we? The TSM obviously were performing very poorly. They, you know, they struggled to qualify for the first stage of VCT earlier this year. They lost to like BBG, I believe in like the second open qualifier. It was really, really poor. And it's definitely not what TSM you know, expect. I remember this is one of the major organizations in, in Valorant and they don't want to take, you know, poor results. You know what I mean? So after that, they were looking to decide really, what can we do now? How can we get these guys to the next level? How can we sort of improve this roster in any way, right? And that obviously came in the form of roster changes, the most notable of which being Wardell, obviously he was dropped. And following Wardell's removal, they also removed the Leko, both of which I had heard of previously, but it, it never really solidified, so we couldn't report on it. And, you know, since then, there's been basically two open slots on the TSM roster. So it will be Sabrosa, Rossi, uh, and Corey. And they will now be joined by GMD, former Gen G player, obviously, and Seven, former T1 player. Basically, what's going to happen now is all of the TSM players will be moving to Austin, which is in Texas. So all the players will be, you know, close together. They will be able to sort of communicate with each other a lot easier, be on like a sort of a LAN environment, kind of. Several other teams have done this. Team Liquid obviously have the, the Netherlands facility. Guard, most notably, obviously practiced from the Complexity facility. Um, I believe I believe Cloud9 used it as well. So, you know, several top teams do do this where they get all their players close together and, you know, it's just a lot easier because it sort of allows them to sort of replicate a LAN environment and things like that. What this basically means is that GMD will be the in-game leader for the side, I believe. Uh, I don't believe Sabrosa will be IGLing anymore. I don't believe Rossi will be IGLing. I believe it will kind of probably be like a Rossi sort of backup IGL kind of thing. Um, usually that happens pretty often. Sometimes there's somebody who calls the strats and then somebody who calls mid rounds. Stuff like that happens quite commonly. I believe it used to happen like on the old V1 roster with Zelsis and Vanity. Uh, I believe that happened. So, you know, it definitely it definitely is something to, uh, you know, to, to sort of keep an eye on. TSM trialed other players as well. They trialed Kompeki, uh, and I'm, obviously that was all over Reddit, and they did trial Neon as well uh, from a crew. If you know anything about these players, you'll realize that they are actually quite good. Obviously, Juvenile, former, former a crew coach, it makes sense why he would, you know, trial them. I don't believe GMD is in Texas yet. I'm not 100% certain on that, but Seven arrived today. I believe he's meeting with his girlfriend in Dallas, I'm pretty sure. So I believe he's going to go from Dallas to Austin. Obviously, as I previously mentioned, <coughs> Wardell and Aleko, uh, both out of the team. Um, Wardell was linked with a move to 100 Thieves, but no... That's, that's not happening anymore. Um, as far as I'm aware, 100 of these will not be playing with Wardell. So unless something major happens that I'm not aware of, that's, you know, that deal's done. Obviously, TSM recently failed to qualify for the first stage of VCT Challenges 1. Been through this before, where they lost to BBG. And, you know, since then, they have sort of failed to replicate these kinds of standards set by, you know, TSM. Uh, and then, obviously, Dominic made this tweet on February the 6th, where he basically said that the team has to sort of improve. They're going to get everyone together, etc., etc. Um, and they are going to only sort of employ people that actually have the same mentality. I think Wardell's biggest problem was the mentality just wasn't there. Some people want it and then some people really want it. So I think I can sort of understand the, the decision. And also I believe he expressed his discontent with traveling to Austin. So um, makes sense. But that's basically the lowdown on TSM. They're going to be competing in the uh, second stage of the Champions Tour, which is obviously going to begin in May, I believe, uh, unless that day, un unless the sort of the details change. Roles, I'm not 100% certain. I'm quite curious as to who will be the flex, as Dust as Dust mentions. Quite curious as to who will play different roles. Obviously, seven main duelist can change the sort of initiator role, maybe. But um, it will it will be quite interesting to see. Maybe Corey. Uh, I'm not sure, but. Um, we'll definitely we'll definitely see what happens with this TSM roster, but that's basically what they're going with for now. So 